If you want to plant a church or you want to send others to plant churches from your church, there's a lot of very important things church planters must do in order to be successful. And so today on Practical Church Planting, we're going to give you seven things that all church planters must do. Welcome back to Practical Church Planting, where in 15 minutes or less, we'll give you practical tips, advice, and encouragement to help you plant and grow healthy churches. My name is Brian Adrosian, and joining me is Dylan Dodson. And today we're talking about seven vital things that church planners have to do. Yes, you must do things, uh, or we would highly encourage you to do things to have a successful church plant. Yes. So here we go. Some of these things we've talked about before, some of the things we haven't. If you want to plant a church, you're interested in planting churches, or if you've planted a church and didn't do some of these things, I guarantee you probably like, yes, I would recommend that too. So from our experience, here's what we would say. Uh, Number one, we do talk about this a lot, is do not plant alone. Whether it's a network, a denomination, a sending church, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Again, we've only been in this thing a little over two years now. <clears throat> and, I, and I've shared personally with our staff. Sometimes I get discouraged, but I still am always encouraged that for whatever reason, God has been with New City. We haven't closed our doors. Things yep. are going relatively well. <clears throat> and I, when I look at guys that haven't made it, part of the reason that some of these guys haven't made it, one of the interesting threads through many of them, though not all, is that often a lot of them planted by themselves. Mm. <clears throat> I know one guy who got a no from, from a church playing network that we're a part of, and he planned it anyway. He's since closed his doors. I know some guys just did it by themselves and yep. didn't think it mattered or whatever, and they either haven't closed their doors or they're really struggling. Um, I think sometimes we can plant churches because we feel like God has called us to do it. And so we just do it the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you want, and it's not just like a funding thing, it's a relational thing. It's yep. a, it's a wisdom thing. Do not plant alone. And if you cannot get someone to get on your team or to back you, I would, I would be patient and wait mm-hmm. because I, Jesus calls us to live in community. So I don't think he's asking you. He, I know he's not asking you to plant a church by yourself. And that's one of the most unwisest things you can do. I don't know that's a word is plant a church completely by yourself. And the thing about it is, I, I mean, you can speak more to this than I can because you've gone through assessment, you've planted a church and things like that. I can't imagine often networks say you should never plant a church. Mm-hmm. No, forever. Most of the time, I'm sure, what I'm sure it yeah, is, if is you there get a things no, you need to change. Yeah. And then maybe. So a lot of it, I think, comes down to impatience. I'm not right. willing yeah, to change exactly. things. A lot of times it's like, okay, maybe not for now Mm -hmm. and because you say well no i'm going to do it now anyway i'm not going to go through these stipulations i'm not going to join another church plan i learned for a few years they go and do it anyway then get in a bunch of trouble yeah because they said they didn't listen to a wise counsel yes so do not plant alone that's a super vital for a successful healthy church plant yes number two meet with as many local pastors as you can so this is if you're especially if you're moving to a new area or you're just launching you're maybe you're working on staff at a church and you're launching a church in the area that you are meet out meet with as many local pastors as you can for a couple of reasons one to learn from them to be like hey i'm new to this and a lot many of them will be happy to yeah secondly it, it helps you build relationships so you don't you might not know who, who who you'll actually hit it off with and connect with and 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 having relationships, if you need, like, for example, a baptismal, we've needed, we've, we don't have yeah. one. So we've borrowed one from two or three different churches at this point because we have relationships. Yep. And then thirdly, it really can help too when you plan a church and maybe some other people are intimidated or they're not happy. They're like, why is this church plant here? And it's really easy for us to think the worst of other people. Mm-hmm. But instead you say, hey, I'm planning a church. I'm less than a mile from you. I'd love to learn from you. I'd love to know who you are. It really helps that pastor. I mean, ideally they don't feel defensive anyway, yeah. but if they do, it really helps tear down the walls to say, oh no, this person isn't about to steal my people. They just want to be a part of the kingdom. And so it's vitally important for you and for those that you're planting near to say, here's who I am. Here's what I want to do. How can I learn from you? It'll just go very well to plant, even if you're in the area once you're actually leading the church plant to reach out and say, here's who I am, meet with as many local pastors as will want to meet with you. Yeah, and in a more practical sense, all, pretty much all of the pastors in your area probably, no matter if you grew up there or not, probably know that area better than you do just because you learn so much pastoring the area. And so if, there's, if they're willing to actually sit down with you and help and give advice, which I'm sure nine out of 10 would, yep. what, what they'll most likely be able to tell you is things that you didn't realize about the people that you're going to be reaching or things about this area yeah. or things about this space that you just wouldn't have known because Very you haven't true. pastored there before. So yeah. yeah, I agree. It's invaluable. And what's interesting, a couple years ago when we were planting New City Church and I, every pastor that I asked met with me. Yeah. Now there was a few that I didn't ask because I assumed that they wouldn't. <laughs> um, but everyone I asked yeah. said yes. And it was just great. And in fact, we were going to, one of the, when we were looking for a place to launch in, one of the places was going to be like super near another church. And mm-hmm. so I met with a guy thinking, oh, this is going to go really awkwardly or bad. And it was totally yeah. fine. Now we didn't end up meeting there. Yeah. Um, but if we had, and I had never met with him, it could have been a really a tense relationship. Totally. So meet yeah. with as many local pastors as you can. Number three, be honest with where you are at in your church planning process, especially even if after you've launched. So here's what I mean. Don't make hyperbolic statements of like, 
we're going to be the best church ever, or yeah. this is the best worship ever. And it's like, no, you have one guy playing guitar in your right. house because you're <laughs> meeting as a launch team meeting. Right. Like, and people know that's not true mm-hmm. and it's not helpful. Another thing, uh, don't or don't never post pictures. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, we, we know yeah. someone, again, not to talk bad about them, but there's this church that's planted recently in our area and they all they ever post is graphics. Mm-hmm. Like there's never a single picture. And I'm like, what? I don't even know if there's anyone there. And here's the tendency. It's easy yep. for us not to post pictures of our gatherings because we're embarrassed by them. Mm-hmm. We might think, well, there's not a lot of people here. First of all, the average person doesn't think that. They think, oh, this is brand new. Like I remember we had a preview service before we started doing launch stuff or whatever at a local church here. Yeah. And we had like 35 people that came, which is awesome for a church, for a launch, like whatever. Yeah. And I didn't post it because I was like, oh, there's not enough people. Yeah. And I'm like, people would have loved to see that because they see what's going on. So don't be embarrassed by your lack of numbers. You're a church plant. You're mm-hmm. like, people know that. But again, be honest with where you are because that's what actually will attract people, not being fake and then showing up and we're told this is going to be the best thing ever than it wasn't. Just yeah. be honest. And one thing about it is people mm-hmm. like to know what to expect before they come. Yeah. And so if someone's new is searching out your Facebook, whether you've launched or haven't launched, it, but if you're meeting, and they don't see any pictures of, especially if you're portable or something like that. They don't see any pictures of people. They don't see any pictures of like what the stage, you know, right. like anything. It's hard to say like, yeah, I'm going to make the jump and go there when I don't even know what we're talking about right, right like now. Like the one, again, not, I hope he's doing a great job, but the one church right. that we're referring to, I have no idea what happens. They've yeah. never posted an actual picture. Yeah. They just post a bunch of, I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah. Um, so just be honest with where you are and you'll, that's actually a good thing. Don't be embarrassed by it because people don't expect some amazing, crazy thing. Yeah, and be, be proud of where you're at. I mean, yeah. even if you're small and really frustrated, if, if you have people showing up, be proud of the people that are showing up. And the up. only people that may not be impressed are church people. And right. everyone and, says they want to plant a church to reach people that don't know Jesus. Yeah. So you're not, you're not, you know, the non-Christian is not going to look at you and be like, they only have that many people. They don't know what's going on. Right. They just want to see people. Yep. So don't be, be honest with where you are at. Yep. Uh, number four, focus on your strengths. So it's very easy to think, well, the preaching, my preaching isn't the best, or we don't have the best worship, or we don't have the best facility, right? Especially in the social media age. Yeah. But you have a ton of strengths, and we'll talk about this more in the next episode, as a church plant. So you have community, right? You can build a strong community there. Uh, It's easy for people to plug in when the church is smaller. Like, Mm -hmm. they don't have to go through a bunch of systems. Um, It's more of a, typically, it's more of a laid-back atmosphere. It's maybe it feels less threatening than a big auditorium space. Like, there are a lot of strengths, not only with being a smaller church plant, but also unique to your church. Now, we're not saying act like we're the best, we, we, you get community better here than any other church ever. Right. Like, don't say that. But if it's a strength of yours, like lean into it. There are unique things about the stage of where New City is at that if we are to continue to grow, will change in the future. Mm-hmm. And it's not to say one's better or worse. It's just you've got to lean into the strengths that you have now. And some of those things like community and it's it's uh, way easier to make decisions and change things. Be honest with where you are. Lean into it because there are strengths of a church plant, even though it's sometimes we focus on all the things we don't have. And, you know, it's so easy to focus on the weaknesses because you you feel like because you're the person that started it, you see all the weaknesses more right. than anybody else. Yep. So you feel like everyone's seeing them. And it's so easy to... And, I mean, there are some weaknesses that if they're weakness, you should focus on fixing them. Like, <laughs> right. if you are a bad preacher, you should focus on getting better. Right. Like listening to but, our free practical church planning preaching course on YouTube. You no, know, I didn't even yeah. think of that. Um, but you don't need to outwardly focus on them. You know, if right. the, you can make the focus on things that are going great and it's encouraging to your people and people like to know that things are going good. They yep. don't want to see everything's doom and gloom. And no matter who you are, you're doing something good. Right. Focus and even for good. us, sometimes... I'll be meeting with people every once in a while, telling them about where we are as a church and kind of like, here's where we are, kind of not think anything of it. And they'll be like, that's so amazing. You yeah. guys are two years in. Yeah. And because we're so used to it, and we're so used to all the things that we want to fix, we never take the moment to be like, oh, this is actually, there's some really great things about what's going to happen. So regardless of the size of your church, how much money you have, what is going well and how can you actually focus on them instead of just trying to be something that you're not or you're not yet? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that is number, I don't know what that was, number four. Number five, live in the moment. Uh, this is really vital for church planners, especially in the beginning, because you're just like, I can't wait till I have a bunch of full-time staff, or I have, I'm not portable anymore, or we have a full band every week, or I have the money to go to this conference or whatever. Um, while that's true, there are some very sweet things about the early stages or about where, wherever you are now. I mean, the good old days is always what they say in the office. I wish I knew it was living in the good old days yeah. when it was happening, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like you're going to look back on some of the struggles you have now with fond memories. Mm-hmm. Not to say it's easy now, but what does it look like to live in the moment and to, although you want to improve and reach more people and change things, to at the same time appreciate where you are at? The sooner you can do that, like I know for me personally, this year, so maybe a little, little bit before two years in, I finally got to the place where I was much better. Like if nothing ever changed at New City Church, 
I, I could with integrity say I could do this forever and other things I would like to see changed. Yeah. Um, but if, if you could guarantee that we would be where we are, at least where we are for now, like I, I maybe, again, I might be bummed, but I like, I could do this. Mm-hmm. And so really learning to live in the moment is really crucial, especially when things are hard in the beginning. And I think people can see through <clears throat> when you are always thinking about the future and in a sense of not caring about where you are right now or Mm -hmm. being always discouraged about where you are right now. Even if you're not vocalizing it, I think people can just see it in your demeanor and see it in the way you carry yourself. If you're always thinking, I wish things, I wish we were at this space or I wish we were at this size or things like that. And it's, it's very easy to see. And it's very discouraging to your people that are like, we're here now. You know, like we think it's cool now. And to be led right. by someone that thinks like <laughs> this stinks, it's a huge bummer. I mean, in right. it's reality. Kinda, you can kind of think of it as the guy that wants to, that's in a small town and wants to be in a big town in ministry. Mm-hmm. And it's like the people in the small town love it. Yeah. But because he's so focused on the next thing, he's missing out on where yeah. he's at and the impact that he could make. So live in the moment. It's hard, but it's super crucial for your health and for the health of the church. Yeah. Uh, number six, kind of what we said earlier, but it's a little bit different. Don't pretend your church is something that it's not. <clears throat> so don't pretend. Um, that your church maybe has the, I, don't, I mean, I, I know we said this, like the best music or I don't mm-hmm. even know how to really, it's different than being honest in the sense of like, know where your church is and, and don't pretend that you're somewhere you're not. In other words, it doesn't mean like you can't want to grow and want maybe one day your worship to be a certain way or yeah. want your facility to look a certain way or whatever it is, your groups to go a certain way, your discipleship process, but your church isn't there now. So how can you be where you are now while still wanting the future, but also living where we are now because I think one of the yeah. biggest things people have get in trouble with is trying to be something they're not and so they can never get there because everyone's looking around you let's say you're a 50 person church and like we're not a 500 person church yeah. so why do I have to email the pastor's assistant just, <laughs> uh, just yeah. to ask them a question yep. like you're not there if you have 50 people you can take every single email you get and you should mm-hmm. um, so don't pretend your church is somewhere that it's not because you'll never get to where you want to get to if you can't like we just said be a part of and live in the moment yeah and a little extra side note um, <clears throat> as you're planting your church and meeting with other church planners and people, be honest about the size of your church. Yeah. That's, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's like everybody exaggerates. It's like, it's happened so much. It's like a joke that everyone exaggerates <laughs> the size of their church. But in reality, if you're sitting, if you have 50 person church and you don't notice that the person you're sitting next to someone who goes to your church and you say, yeah, we have 75 people showing up. <laughs> they're sitting there thinking you're a liar yeah. and it happens every day. So yep. be that's honest good. about where you're at, regardless yep. of the context. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. And again, don't, don't pretend your church is somewhere. It's not, yeah. again, your people will pick up on this. Doesn't seem right. Like, why are we yeah. acting like we're something we're not? And then you'll never be able to get to maybe the place you want to get to because mm-hmm. you've got to be who you are. Because and then go for it. Living in the moment. You're, that's great. And you're not being honest with where you are. So yep. don't pretend good. Good stuff. Lastly, <laughs> number seven, Share your journey, mm. uh, especially in a social media age. If you, if we've talked about him before, Gary Vaynerchuk, his most recent book, I forget what it's called. It's yellow. Crushing it? Yes. Mm-hmm. He talks a lot about this, about guy, people who, guys or girls who like maybe want to go on a weight loss journey or want to start running or have a hobby, whatever. He talks about how somebody gives examples of people documenting their journey and how they blew up. Again, not the point's not to blow up, but people are fascinated. Yeah. And so this goes again with being honest, being willing to be honest about where you are. Like share your journey, use Insta stories, use Twitter, use Facebook. If you have a blog, like write a post once a week. I think you'll be absolutely amazed that the amount of interest people will have in how things are going. Like we love just to see people's journeys. And one of the strengths you have as a church planner, because it's so unique and different. I mean, anytime you're any pastor, maybe people are interested in it, but people are really fascinated with, with new things starting. Yeah. So how can you document your journey and share it with people? A, because people want to know and B, people in your area might want to get plugged in. But again, using social media, blog, whatever it is, whatever platform you might like, if you're on uh, social media is just be honest. Like, here's how today went. People are fascinated with behind the scenes stuff. Yep. Sharing your journey is a huge strength in could pay a lot of dividends for you to just for, to look back and remember and for other people to see. Yeah, I think it can be easy to think, especially if you're smaller, that this that if doing that too much will get very self-promoting. And I feel like I'm just talking about myself all the time, especially if I don't have a big team or we haven't launched yet. But that's how people know you're going to launch. Like that's yeah. how people know that you exist. Um, like Dylan, for example, every Monday uh, writes a blog called Five Things I Saw, Felt, and Heard at News City. Whatever the number is. Or yeah, or yeah an X number of yep. things. And it'd be very easy, I'm sure for you, especially when you started it, think like, who cares what I saw? It's about, but, but I've seen so many people be like, Hey, I, I read that in your blog this week. And I, it's, it's so cool. And I'm out of town to see what happened when I yep. wasn't there and things like that. And people just want to see as much as they can. Yep. And so don't, don't hide. Yeah. It's an interest for, for people that are not part of your church, but like you said, that's a good point. People that are part of your church, they want to know. So the yeah. thing I post every Monday, which if you're a pastor, 
do it. Yep. I mean, my blog is DylanDotson.com and you, I mean, there's, it's every, you know, it's there. I do it every Monday. Every so Monday, it's like yep. every third post is that one. <laughs> and it's just things that I saw, felt and heard on Sunday. And I've had the same thing. People have told me they love it. They've joked about things. They said, it's kind of cool to kind of see like what you were thinking. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, people just love to see the journey, especially if they're a part of your church, they want to know what's going on in your life. Yeah. So and I journey. think also that goes a little bit back to don't pretend that the, don't pretend your church is something that's not, but don't yep. pretend that you're something you're not. Don't mm-hmm. pretend that you're like, you're too big to let people know how you actually feel about the right. way things are. Well, and it's funny. Can't. I mean, I don't know if soft promote or not, but like I'll post like I would, didn't like that message. Right. And I hate it because then someone always comments, oh, it was great. <laughs> no, it was so good. But I'm like, for real, like here's a part of the message that I messed up on or I wasn't happy with. I think people are like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, or here's something that happened that I really, really celebrated that I thought was really cool. People are like, because they don't know what's going on. So if I see somebody do something really cool or see something that happened, that it's cool. People are like, oh, that, I didn't know that happened. That was yeah. really awesome. So totally. again, those are seven vital things church planners must do. We would recommend them to you. Thanks for being with us today and we'll be with you next time on Practical Church Planning. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Practical Church Planning. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or Practical Planning, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, make sure you like or subscribe or do whatever it's telling you to do or should do on that platform. And hey, if you are so tired of looking at our ugly faces, but you're not tired of listening to our beautiful voices, Mm. then you can find our podcast if you just search Practical Church Planning on iTunes or Google Play. Make sure not to just find it, not just to listen, but to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Brian, tell them to subscribe. Subscribe. See you next time.